Good evening, everyone. Today, I wanted to give you practical steps and practical tips of how to deal with life transitions. This video was actually recorded the end of last year in Singapore. We were addressing a group of students who just recently graduated college. But for anyone who is going through any kind of transition, whether it's a job, whether it's school, work or family, this video can be helpful. So I hope you enjoy. I think for me, I would say that they need to compartmentalize and they need to separate things and look at aspects of their lives uh, separately first. I think one of the big issues people have is it's too overwhelming. <laughs> if you were to look at your life and all of a sudden overnight you put the pressure on regarding, okay, what kind of work? That expectation. Now you put the pressure of where am I going to live? You put the expectation of how am I going to survive? Who are my friends? I have to figure all this, this out. It can be so overwhelming. And then not to, and also to take into account, now I gotta take care of my mental health. Now I gotta take care of my finances. Now it's gonna impact my social relationships. But for me, it's no, divide all those things up. These are very big topics. And use the wellness wheel. There's many different models out there. Um, it can be take a look at your social relationships in that aspect and what do you need to have some kind of balance because you need social interactions and what's healthy so if you can take space again this is not figured out in five minutes <laughs> so you need to really Take some time, give yourself that space and come up with an action plan. See, because your life is different from other people, your conditions are not the same as everyone else. Yes, you're gonna look at everyone else and see what they're doing as, as a gauge and that's okay. But the next part is see for you, for your nature for your preferences, for your needs that you, you need, then see what makes sense for me. Okay, now let's look at social relationships. For me to be healthy and balanced, and this is the gauge, in order for me to function properly at my best, what do I need socially? Who do I need to surround myself around? What kind of support system? How much or how little do I need to be around my family? How much and how little do I need to be around my friends? So many people, if you do not take time to come up with a plan, ooh, very dangerous. Why? Because you're gonna make decisions on the spot, last minute, and you never thought about it. They're gonna approach you and they're gonna say, hey, let's go here, let's go to Vegas. Let's take a girl's road trip. You never consider that. And if you did already have a plan, and imagine if you knew upfront, hmm, right now I need this amount of time because I need to look for a job. I need this amount of time because I need to focus on my physical health. I need this amount of time to do this next thing. So now you know how to use your time wisely. But you gotta come up with a plan based off around of what is your goal, what is your direction, what are you trying to achieve, and also what are your needs and your wants. So then take the time, like I said, that's only one dimension of you, social. Now look at financially. Financially is what kind of lifestyle do you wanna live? Again, where are you trying to go? <laughs> and what is minimal for you? Is the lifestyle you're living uh, realistic at this point? And see how much money do I have in the bank? Is money an issue? But go through this analysis. Just money, neutrally. Again, no panicking. It does not help you. 
but look at this dimension of you and come up with a plan as best as you can. This is not a master plan. I can never shift this. No, as of this moment, with what I know, with where I'm at, with where the job market is, let me make the best hypothesis, let me make the best guess, and let me make the best um, plan of action to address this. Then you have, again, mental health. Find ways of how do you balance your, your moods? How do you balance your anxiety, your overall well-being? Then take a look at your physical aspect. Are you overweight? Are you not sleeping enough? Do you need to drink more water? Do you need to exercise? Do you need to get checkup at the doctor? Do you have any illnesses? Take care of that. Do you need uh, medication and treatment for that? Take a look at this. Spiritually, yes, <laughs> I said spiritually, you also need this. Uh, you can go to a temple, you can go to a church, you can gain wisdom through books and podcasts, but there's so much resource out there. But the key part that people are missing out is you need to tend to this category. So this is not like back burner stuff. Let me take care of everything, then I'll come back to No, 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 no. It all goes together and start to make a plan and start to integrate it into your life. But again, take a look at all these dimensions, then maybe it starts to get overwhelming again. Okay, <laughs> no problem. And that's normal. Now take a pause. Good job. You got a few dimensions. You're starting the planning process. And then now go take a break, rest, feel proud of yourself. And now take space to just let it sit and let it marinate. And then the following day, come back again with a clear uh, head on your shoulders. Now look at it from a new perspective. And it's the same thing as if you're trying to build a house and the mistake people have is really, you're gonna build a house in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's design the blueprint, design the plan. And this situation is for your life, you're the architect, you're the designer, you're the client, you're the builder. So design it, build it. What kind of house do you want? And if you want this freestyle, you know, we're going to go with the flow. I'm not gonna prepare anything, mm, be careful. Because when natural disasters happen, your foundation's not strong, it's over. But use the wisdom and know that, okay, I'm going on this new journey, I'm building a new life for myself, and there's so many areas. It's not just the house, but it's the foundation, it's the backyard. It's the front yard, it's the interior, it's the exterior, it's the colors, it's the chimney. Is it one, one bedroom? Is it one story? Is it two stories? But you get to craft this as best as you can. But make, give yourself time, make this plan. If you need support, then ask for support. You know, from healthy friends, from adults, from coaches, from a therapist, get a team that can help you come up with a plan. And I find another mistake that happens for young people who are pursuing this is they're in such a rush to go and to go fast. And for me, I would say use the spiritual wisdom and it says slow down to go fast and take time to get as still, as neutral, as calm as possible, and you look at this plan or you craft a plan as neutrally as possible, as realistically as possible. Don't make stuff up where it sets you up where you're gonna fail. You're not gonna be able to do it and you know yourself better. <laughs> like if you can't get out of bed until 12, 
okay, take that into account. Start changing your habits. But this is a working plan, but get as accurate, get as clear, and what will be helpful for you is be very calm, be very compassionate to yourself. And last part, get as excited as possible. What a great opportunity for you to design your life now. So why is cultivating the spiritual dimension so important? And for me, I would say you first need to understand what is the spiritual path. And the spiritual path and spirituality is really at the most basic, easy way to understand. I would say it's the undoing and the unlearning of the things that you were conditioned. And why that is so important and so revel uh, relevant at this time is because we operate with what we know. We operate with what we're taught. We operate with what was passed down to us through our family, through the culture, through society, through uh, the accepted customs and norms and what's expected of us. So again, we're packed. And for young people, imagine how much has been put placed on you. So now on the spiritual path, what that is saying is now slow down and take a look at yourself and start to see accurately because sometimes we can begin to make stories. Sometimes we can start to have fantasies and image of ourselves because Oh, it's cool. <laughs> I should be this way because that's what everyone told me. I should be this way because it provides status. I should be this way. I should behave this way. I should live this kind of lifestyle. I should all these kind of things without even reflecting and contemplating. But unlearning things that may not be accurate, unlearning habits, and stories that may no longer serve you and getting yourself as clear minded uh, as neutral and back to nature as possible for me is a first start then once you start to see yourself accurately perceive yourself accurately your nature accurately then you'll know how to proceed next but imagine if you did not take the time to see reality as it is, to know who you actually are, and you're making very big choices that will alter the rest of your life. But it's based off of a facade. Maybe it's based off of a mask. Maybe you're making choices that are um, coming up as a result of trauma and fear and survival. But it's, we have to understand where our motivation comes from. We have to understand who we are. We have to understand conditions of our life accurately, our needs, our wants, the reality of the world as it is. And when you can do that, see everything as it is and very neutrally, then the next steps that you make will be based off of real accurate information. Otherwise, it, you can fall into pitfalls because the foundation and the information that you're working with is not accurate. So for me, I would say get to see reality as it is and you need your lens of looking at the world to be clear and objective and neutral because otherwise if it's not those things what is it imagine if your lens was tainted with anger <laughs> and then you're a resentful person everyone is going to cheat you um, you have a fear-based mentality things are limited you got to watch your back now imagine the choices that you make as a result of that if you think, I need to be special, I need to be seen, 
I need to be only number one. Wow, if that's your lens of looking at the world, how are you going to plan the rest of your life? So if possible, come back to basics and see reality as it is first. And then the plans that you make and the actions that you take as a result of that would best serve you. are three actions that people can take to start the spiritual path. I would say meditation because you need to cultivate a space where you tune out your five senses. You know, your sight, your sound, your taste, your smell, because it's tainting your filter and it's tainting your mind. But for me, close off all those gates allow your mind to be still so then you can develop the skill of neutral observation so you can start to see things clearly so meditation is very key so that you can have the space and the tool to start observing uh, the second thing i would say is to journal to journal and to take time to log what did you observe neutrally like start to see yourself accurately and catch yourself like oh wow this is how i talk this is how i behave this is how i think these are the the moods that arise from these kind of things but start to know those patterns and when you can identify patterns you can uh, see the conditions then you'll know how to fix it but for me, the first step is uh, start to track these things and recognize the pattern. And then the third thing I would say is to find time to be still. Find time to be alone and to be with yourself so that you can contemplate, contemplate so then you can reflect, so then you can just breathe and see of, wait, Am I headed in the right direction? <laughs> Were those actions that I took, does it serve me? Or does it harm me? Oh, those friends that I'm around. Okay, are they helpful? Are they toxic? Hmm, I'm not sure. But you need to have that space to start to make sense of it. Things that no longer serve you, get rid of it things that are helpful for you, then you can start to do more of that. But I think these are just the three basic, simple things uh, to start with.